Do you struggle to identify what is wrong with your curls? I know it can be so frustrating to figure out what your hair needs and really overwhelming and you just end up with information overload. Does it need protein? Does it need moisture? Do you have buildup? Are your products just not right for you? Is your hair damaged? I know it's a lot and we're going to break it down in this video and I'm going to help you diagnose your hair. If you are new to my channel, welcome. My name is Gina and here we make videos all about naturally curly hair. I love doing step-by-step -step tutorials, helping you a problem solve with your curls and talking about the science of hair and if you're a returning viewer thank you so much for coming back to my channel I also wanted to thank Curlsmith for partnering with me for this video they're one of my all-time favorite hair brands it's one of those brands that I always tend to go back to when I'm not testing out new products and new stuff and I love how their tagline is food for curls because their products are actually designed to give your hair what it needs and I love how they have their different lines depending on what your hair needs and all of their products are a hundred percent vegan and cruelty free. So this is going to be a comprehensive guide to figuring out what your hair needs. So I'm going to separate this by the different issues that could be happening with your hair. And I'm going to have timestamps in the description box down below. So if you need to skip to a certain one, you can do that. But I definitely recommend watching through all of them because a lot of the symptoms cross over into different issues. And so you might think your hair needs one thing, but if you learn about a different issue, it could be that as well. And we're going to tie it all together because I know a lot of these things sound very similar and what the symptoms are for each one. So let's go ahead and dive in. So you first want to start off by examining your hair. Is there actually something wrong with your hair? A lot of these symptoms that I'm going to talk about are normal things that happen all the time with your hair, such as frizz. Frizz is going to pop up in every single one of these issues and there could be nothing wrong with your hair at all because everyone gets frizz. But what you want to pay attention to are what are the changes that you've noticed in your hair recently? Did your hair suddenly just start acting different? Do you feel like that your hair is healthy? has declined recently and you're starting to notice damage in your hair. If you had a wash day that just randomly didn't turn out the way that you hoped and you didn't like your results, I recommend checking out the video that I did all about the common causes of failed wash days because that's going to dive more into products and styling techniques like those things that impact how your hair turns out on wash day, whereas this one is more so about what your hair needs, like the health of your hair, or if you're noticing these things over time or you've actually had significant changes to your hair. So the first issue that we're going to talk about are when your products are just not right for you. This can be really hard to tell, especially when you're first getting started and you're experimenting with different things. But one of the number one problems that I see and also one of the number one things that often gets confused with a lot of these problems is having lack of hold in your products or not having enough hold in your gel on your wash day. This usually results in frizz or curls that don't last or curls that fall limp. These are the two most common issues that I hear from you all whenever I'm talking with you is you have frizz and your curls don't last. And almost all the time when I ask you what products that you're using, you're using very light hold gels or you're not using a gel at all and your products just don't have enough hold to keep the frizz at bay. Like I mentioned, everyone has hold, and if you have a looser curl pattern, your curls are probably gonna fall throughout the day or by next day hair, and so using a stronghold gel is key to keep that in. So just because you ended up with frizz after wash day doesn't mean there's something wrong with your hair. The products just probably aren't strong enough hold. So the solution for that is to obviously look for a stronger hold gel or a better formula gel. I've always said in my videos, if you scrunch out your gel cast after it's dried and your hair frizzes up immediately, then the gel is not that great because good quality gels should not do that. You should be able to scrunch out the crunch and you should still have good looking curls that are not super frizzy. One of my favorites from Curlsmith is the Curl Defining Styling Souffle. This gel a little goes a long way and it's a buildable hold. So if you're just getting started with incorporating hold or gels, this is a good option because you don't need a lot of product. In fact, I actually recommend not using too much of this product because then you might get more of like a stringy look in your hair. So a little definitely goes a long way. You don't need a lot and you can get a strong hold by kind of building it up gradually. But once you find the right amount, this is a really good one. The next common problem with products is oftentimes they're too heavy. So if your products are too heavy for you, you're not gonna get a lot of volume. Your curls might look very limp and they might also feel very weighed down or they could even feel kind of producty where the hair feels almost sticky. So the solution to that is to incorporate more lightweight products. This typically happens with stylers where the stylers are just too heavy. So you might wanna go with a more lightweight curl cream or even go with a leave-in conditioner and go with a more lightweight gel versus a very thick gel. 
So that leads me to the next common problem, and that is not the right formula of gel or the right formula of products. There's different types of gels, and a lot of times they will be labeled like a souffle or a custard or a gel, but sometimes they're not, and they just have different textures to them. All the Curl Smith gels are formulated just a little bit differently, and they have a different texture. So if your curls are feeling very sticky and kind of tacky feeling, or you feel like a residue on your hands when you touch your hair, you either use too much product for your hair type with that product, or the product just wasn't the right formula for you. A perfect example of that is the Curlsmith Shine Gel versus the Shape Up Aqua Gel. This gel is a very thick formula. It's a level nine hold. It has humidity blocking ingredients, which create a film on the hair. If you use too much of this, and if you have like very fine hair, it could weigh down your hair or give you that producty feeling because it's a very thick formula. The Shape Up Aqua Gel, on the other hand, is a very liquidy gel. This is the most liquidy gel that Curlsmith offers. Now that's kind of hard to tell when you're ordering online, but I do have a video comparing all the Curlsmith gels that I recommend checking out if you're wanting to kind of dive into the different formulas of gel and how they're different but look for something more lightweight. Next problem with products is sometimes they're too drying. Now I've never had that problem with Curlsmith products because they're all very moisturizing, but if your products don't have enough moisture in them or enough weight in them, then you might notice like a very dry, brittle feeling in your hair. You might have a lot of frizz that kind of looks like flyaways or you might have a lot of root frizz. That means that the products were too drying. Sometimes you might also notice that your curls will kind of fall and look stringy by the end of the day and just very frizzy if they don't have enough moisture. So the solution to incorporating more moisture in your styling products is to use products that contain moisturizing ingredients. All of the Curlsmith products are. You also want to look for products that have some oils in them. If you do really struggle with dryness, oils can help kind of lock in moisture in your hair. Another great category of ingredients are film forming humectants and actually the Styling Souffle has several of them, which is why I think I love this so much in the winter time because it really helps to trap moisture in your hair. So it has things like aloe in it and flaxseed. Those help keep moisture in and it really keeps my hair moisturized. You also might want to layer a cream underneath your gel. I usually recommend that combination, a styling cream and a gel for the best moisture and hold. But if you're worried about your hair getting weighed down, definitely use a leave-in and then pair it with a gel that is moisturizing. So now let's dive into protein and moisture balance. This is probably one of the hardest concepts that people really struggle with, but it's actually pretty simple. Basically our hair needs some of both. And unless if you've done some extreme things to your hair, you probably don't have moisture overload or protein overload. And they're not exactly opposites either. Sometimes our hair is just lacking some moisture, but that doesn't mean we use too much protein. And on the other hand, sometimes we just need a little bit more protein, but it doesn't mean that our hair is completely in moisture overload. So for these next couple of sections, I'm going to be comparing two common problems and talking about the difference between them. So the first one is moisture overload and high girl fatigue. Now I did a video recently all about high girl fatigue and I briefly touched on moisture overload, but they are actually different. So moisture overload is not as extreme as high girl fatigue. So some symptoms that you might notice if you have moisture overload or if you just use too much moisture in your routine include your hair feeling overly soft, Maybe it feels very damp or it took forever to dry or after you finished diffusing, it still feels kind of wet within your hair. It might look very weighed down. And like I mentioned, this usually happens after one wash day routine that you just had too much moisture in your hair or too much water in your hair when you were styling. And on the other hand, high girl fatigue is a more extreme version that happens over time. It's actual damage that happens to your hair from over wetting it or wetting it too much on a daily basis. So with this, the hair will also feel pretty soft but it also has this like mushy damp feeling like the hair just feels kind of gummy and it doesn't have any bounce to it like it just feels very limp and when you like pull your curl down it just doesn't bounce back up and as I mentioned this is more of like prolonged damage that happens over time so you're not gonna get high girl fatigue from one wash day this is if you're somebody maybe like a swimmer or you're someone who washes your hair every single day it's that repeated swelling and drying of the hair every single day that causes long-term damage to the hair I dive into it more in that video. I'll link it for you down below. So the solution to this is to incorporate some protein, especially if you are experiencing high girl fatigue, then you probably need to do a bond repair treatment. But let's first talk about the solution to just having too much moisture in your hair or moisture overload. So this is more of like the short term if your hair just turned out with too much moisture after wash day. 
So your next wash day, you would want to clarify your hair. This can really help to just reset your hair in general. So almost all of these solutions that I'm going to be mentioning include clarifying and deep conditioning because that's the best way to reset your hair if you're having an issue. So for clarifying, I recommend the Curlsmith Wash and Scrub Detox Probiotic Shampoo. This is one of my favorite clarifying shampoos. It has a little bit of a grit to it, so it's great for your scalp as well. But this is gonna help remove any buildup on your hair and also just give you a clean slate. So step number two after clarifying you're going to want to use a regular conditioner like a lightweight conditioner or you could even incorporate a deep conditioner or a conditioner that has a little bit of protein this can help give your hair some more structure and protein actually helps keep your hair moisturized it's not two opposite ends of the spectrum your hair needs both protein helps fill in the gaps in our hair's cuticle which prevent moisture loss so anyways, the multitasking conditioner is a really great option if you just wanna incorporate a little bit of protein in your routine, but you don't wanna overdo it. I don't think you could get protein overload from using this. It's more of a lightweight protein. This is a three-in-one conditioner for damaged hair, so this is gonna help repair your hair and restore its bounce. This can be used as a leave-in conditioner, a rinse-out conditioner, or a deep conditioner. I actually used it as a deep conditioner on my last wash day. Love the results. I do usually rinse it out if I'm gonna be using it as a deep conditioner, and then I go in with regular stylers after. So if you were experiencing moisture overload or just too much moisture in your last routine and your hair is not dry, then you can go for more lightweight styling products. So you could use something like the Shape Up Aqua Gel, which is a very lightweight, liquidy gel that's gonna help give your hair some definition and not weigh it down. So what do you do if you have the extreme case and you have that high girl fatigue. Bond Curl actually repairs three different types of bonds in our hair, so there's different types of damage, but the one that we're referring to here is damage from actual water on our hair, and this can help with that. So this is a treatment that you would use before you shampoo your hair. So you would apply this to your hair. When it's dirty, you just dampen your hair, apply it, then you shampoo it out afterwards. You have to shampoo this out afterwards. Bond treatments or protein treatments can sometimes make your hair feel more brittle. So if you wanna restore that softness to your hair, then you'll definitely wanna deep condition after. So I also wanted to mention a sale that Curlsmith is having right now on their strength kit. I love how Curlsmith does these bundles because you can get a discount on products when they're bundled together. So the strength kit includes the Bond Curl Rehab Salve, which is the product that I just talked about that's great for lots of different types of damage. It also includes the Core Strength Shampoo, which is a great shampoo that has some protein in it. It also includes the Multitasking Conditioner, which is that three-in-one conditioning product, and the Shape Up Aqua Gel, which is an amazing, really lightweight gel that's gonna give you light hold. I actually prefer to layer the Shape Up Aqua Gel with a stronger hold gel just to give my hair longer lasting results. So the last time that I used the Shape Up Aqua Gel, I did apply a little bit of the Shine Gel on top, which is a very strong hold. So I applied this all over and then I just scrunched in a little bit of this just to give it some added hold. So now let's compare a lack of moisture or protein overload. Your hair can be lacking moisture without actually being in protein overload. Protein overload is the more extreme and of the spectrum where your hair actually has a buildup of protein on it. Basically, lack of moisture in your hair, some of the symptoms are obviously your hair is going to feel dry. So what does dryness feel like? It usually feels kind of brittle and just doesn't feel very soft and it might feel like uh, very tangly. It just doesn't feel great and doesn't feel very smooth. Your curls also might look very limp, but they might look more stringy, which is what I mentioned in the beginning when I was talking about how your products could be lacking moisture in them. Well, this is the same thing where the hair just kind of looks like a lot of flyaways and it just looks very stringy and it's not like holding into clumps. And again, this lack of moisture usually just happens after one wash. It just means you didn't incorporate enough moisture in your wash day routine. So the difference with protein overload, as I mentioned, is a buildup of protein on the hair. So this can feel very dry and brittle. It feels like you have buildup on your hair sometimes. It also looks very dull usually, actually with both of these your hair can look very dull and just be lacking shine. You also will have a lot of frizz and flyaways, but the biggest difference with protein overload is you are probably experiencing a lot of breakage and shedding. Now, sometimes it's hard to tell what breakage actually looks like versus regular shedding. Take a look and see if you see that bulb on the end of them, which is like the sebum from your scalp. That means you just shed the hair like normal. But if you're seeing a bunch of shorter hairs that don't have that bulb on the end and they're just like a like stretched out on the end or they just have like a regular flat end on both sides of the hair that's probably breakage especially if they're very short 
So this happens with repeated excessive use over time of protein. So I guess this could also happen after one wash if you had hair that didn't need a lot of protein, like low porosity hair or coarse textured hair. Those hair types don't need a lot of protein, so if you use too much protein in your routine, you could get this experience after just one wash day. But for the most part, people who experience protein overload have done this over time, or they've used a protein-heavy routine back-to-back. -back. Just look at what you've been doing in your routine. Take a look at your product ingredients. Look for the word protein. It's pretty easy to pick out when it comes to protein. Sometimes you might also see hydrolyze. It'll say like hydrolyzed wheat protein. It's pretty easy to pick out but take a look at your products, see if you've been using too much in your routine or have you been doing a lot of protein treatments. Protein treatments are not necessary unless if you have damage in your hair. So one of the most foolproof ways to tell is to do a stretch test. So you want clean hair that doesn't have any product in it and then gently stretch it. If it snaps immediately, then it's either lacking moisture or you could have protein overload. If it stretches and stretches and it just kind of like gets longer, it has a ton of elasticity, then it could be high growth fatigue or moisture overload. And if it just stretches some and then breaks, that's totally normal. Our hair is going to break if you're applying tension on it. So look for just that extreme snapping immediately or that long stretch. So how do you fix protein overload? I would recommend using the primer that comes with it first, especially with protein overload, because you don't want to cause any excess breakage, especially when detangling. So the scalp recipe or the detox kit comes with the super slip prebiotic primer. This is a primer that you use first to prep your hair. You apply it to wet hair and gently detangle. Then you shampoo with this, and then you can follow up with a conditioner like the postbiotic calming conditioner. However, I would recommend deep conditioning. You could even use the deep conditioner that's in the scalp recipe. That one's amazing and more lightweight. Or you could go with something that is super moisturizing like the Double Cream Deep Quencher. This is like the heaviest deep conditioner that Curlsmith has and it's gonna deliver a ton of moisture and a lot of softness. It does have lots of oils in it and stuff. You could even incorporate some steam or heat if you really want to increase the penetration of your deep conditioner and amp up that deep conditioning treatment. And then you would rinse that out and just follow up with some very moisturizing styling products. So you don't wanna be using protein in your styling products. If you are experiencing protein overload, you gotta cut it out for a couple of wash days and then maybe work it back into something that's a little bit less intense with protein, like the multitasking conditioner, for example. So if you are just experiencing a lack of moisture in your hair, then you would want to follow the routine, like I mentioned before, that just incorporates more moisture. So you can first clarify if you want to, but you probably don't need to if you're just lacking moisture, that could dry out your hair more. So maybe just use a moisturizing shampoo, like the Core Strength Shampoo. Then you would want to condition, or you can definitely deep condition your hair. I definitely recommend doing that on a regular basis if your hair is lacking moisture. And then you would follow up with some moisturizing styling products, and you could even incorporate some protein protein in one or two of those styling products just to maintain that balance. So now let's talk about buildup on the hair and the differences between a product buildup hard water buildup, and just natural oils on your hair. Product buildup occurs when we're using products that create a film on the hair or adhere to the hair. So like conditioners, gels, all that kind of stuff. Hard water buildup occurs from the natural minerals that occur in our water, especially if you live in an area that has hard water and you need a special shampoo to be able to, to remove that. So product buildup, usually will appear very dull on the hair. So your hair is gonna look dull with both product and hard water buildup. With both of these, your hair is also going to be very weighed down and limp. It might not bounce up as easily if it has this weight on it from the product or the minerals. And the feeling is probably the biggest indicator here. If it's very sticky or producty feeling, that's product buildup. And with hard water buildup, it's probably gonna feel more dry and brittle. And with both of these, your products are not gonna absorb as easily. Because product buildup does create that barrier on the hair, you might notice your conditioners are not soaking in. So if you've been conditioning your hair and it's just not doing anything and your hair is not getting moisturized, then you could have buildup on it. You can also experience frizz with both of these, but I bet it's probably looking more like wet frizz. But if your hair doesn't really feel clean after you shampoo and it still has kind of that sticky feeling, then your shampoo that you're using is not removing that product buildup, so you need a stronger clarifying shampoo in order to remove that. So most shampoos are usually able to remove product buildup, but I find that the very mild ones or the co-washes probably can't remove product buildup if you're using products that have lots of oils and butters in them, or even products that have like humidity blocking ingredients. Those are meant to bind to the hair, so you're probably gonna need a stronger shampoo. And personally, I find that shampoos that have more of a lather usually do a better job at cleansing. So the only way 
way to really tell the main difference between these two is determine if you have hard water in your home. So if you do have hard water, you're going to need a special chelating shampoo. I did a whole video before on hard water buildup. I can link it for you down below if you wanna see the whole routine on how to remove it. But if you just have product buildup, then again, I recommend the Curl Smith Detox Shampoo in the Detox Kit. It's a great kit at just removing product buildup, but also not drying out your hair. So you would want to use the clarifying shampoo. You could also start off with the primer if you don't wanna dry your curls out then use the shampoo and then use a deep conditioner afterwards. If you've been experiencing a lot of buildup, you can even go product free afterwards. That's a great way to just reset your hair and give it a break. And then the next time you style, you could apply stylers. So now let's talk about an oily scalp. This is another type of buildup kind of, but it's our hair's natural oils, which are not bad. It's actually good for our hair. But if you're somebody that naturally has a very oily scalp, a lot of times that's just genetics or it's hormones, it's gonna feel greasy. You're gonna actually see that oil, which looks very shiny. So that's a big difference between the others is they make your hair look very dull, like product buildup. Whereas just regular sebum is gonna make your hair look very shiny. It might make your roots look very like PC, like it's making the hair stick together. Your roots might be sticking to your head and it just might be weighed down overall because of that oil buildup on your scalp. So the way that you fix this is to just shampoo your hair. You can use a regular shampoo and you might need a shampoo more often if you have a very oily scalp. You might need to wash your hair every two days or every three days. Everyone's hair is different, but if your hair is very dry, then definitely don't wash it too much. But the detox kit is actually designed to help rebalance our scalp's microbiome. And I love this because it not only removes product buildup, but it also helps to just keep the scalp more balanced so it prevents scalp issues. So if you are just randomly getting an excessive amount of oil that you didn't before, maybe try out the detox kit because it can help rebalance your your scalp and it can also help clear up some scalp issues like I've heard of people that have cerebic dermatitis that have noticed that this has helped them um, so maybe something to try you might need something medicated if it's really bad but definitely give this one a try if you feel like you just have an imbalance happening between dryness and oil in your hair. So going back to the routine or the solution, if you have an oily scalp, you probably wanna go with more lightweight stylers. Definitely avoid those heavy butters and oils. You might want to just apply them from like the mid links down if you don't want to get heavy products on your scalp but I actually recommend still applying some type of moisture to the tops of your hair, so the hair closer to the root, not your scalp though. Um, however, the postbiotic calming conditioner actually can be applied towards the scalp. It's not gonna hurt anything. It's good to still moisturize that hair so that way it doesn't produce more oil, but you don't wanna overdo it. You still wanna pick something lightweight and I would just kind of glaze that conditioner over the surface of your hair versus like applying it directly to your scalp. So the next problem we're gonna talk about is damage and high porosity hair. So some of the symptoms of having damaged hair, of course, include actual physical damage in your hair. So having split ends and breakage. If you examine your hair closely and you're seeing a lot of split ends on your ends, then you definitely need a haircut and your hair probably has some damage. Also, if you are experiencing a lot of breakage, then you probably also have poor length retention. So if you notice your hair never seems to grow past a certain length, and if you're seeing a lot of those short little hairs all over like your sink when you're styling, like I mentioned before, that is usually breakage. Also, if you have a lot of random straight pieces all over your hair or pieces that are just not as curly as the rest of your hair, or if your ends are straighter than your root. The natural curls are coming in, but those damaged pieces are still falling straight because heat does damage your curl pattern over time, especially if you're not protecting it, your hair is going to be a lot straighter and more high porosity. You might also experience lots of tangles and excessive shedding. Your hair might also appear very stringy. Also just overall dryness or if your hair loses moisture very quickly. I mean, everyone with curly hair usually experiences dryness, but if your hair dries out by the end of the day, like it looks super dry, or if it dries out by next day and you feel like you need to rewash, then a lot of times that's also a huge sign of high porosity hair where the hair just looks very dull and frizzy and just looks very dry and feels very brittle by the end of the day. Also, if it's hard to refresh, a lot of times that's a sign of damage and it does get better over time. My hair took like three or four years to fully transition and I'm still in working on it, but I had to actually grow out the damage. It's hard to repair hair that is already damaged. You can prevent breakage and strengthen your hair with bond treatments and I'll show you that 
but you got to grow it out and get frequent trims. I didn't do like a big chop. I gradually got trims like every six weeks. Like I was going very frequently when I was transitioning, but you have to make sure you're protecting your ends when you're getting them cut. So I recommend using a heat protectant like the Curl Smith Miracle Shield and also incorporating oils as a pre-poo treatment before you shampoo to help protect those ends as you're trying to grow out your hair. I would do the Bond Curl treatment first and then use a shampoo. You can either use like a clarifying shampoo or just a mild shampoo because you don't want to dry out your hair, especially if it's very damaged. And then you would definitely want to deep condition afterwards. So I would recommend something like the Double Cream Deep Quencher. This is super moisturizing or you could even go with the Hydro Mask if you want something a little bit more lightweight. And then you would want to incorporate some stylers that have protein. This is definitely gonna help strengthen your hair and also help keep that moisture in your hair longer if your hair is damaged. So you could incorporate, like I mentioned, the Shave Up Aqua Gel, or maybe even use the Feather Light Protein Cream first and then a Stronger Hold Gel. So this one, it might be a too light hold for super damaged hair. You might need to layer up something like the Shine Gel or just go with the Shine Gel since it is a hard hold gel. So then there's also just being overdue for a trim. That's the less extreme version and we all experience that um, even if you don't have very damaged hair you probably notice some signs of your hair just being overdue for a trim so for me personally when my hair just isn't acting right or my products just don't seem to be working or my hair is very tangly that's usually the best sign have you ever felt a strand of hair and you just feel like a bump at the end of it or even towards the top it's happened Usually I cut those off with hair cutting scissors to get rid of it right away because even that tiny little knot will cause a big mat. Um, but that's the best sign of needing a trim. And that usually happens when there's like a kink in the hair from like actual physical damage to the hair from brushing and whatnot or it happens when the ends are just getting very thin. Also when it's getting a lot harder to refresh, I'm just getting a ton of like breakage and shedding when I'm refreshing, I know I'm due for a trim and it makes the world of a difference. You'd be surprised, even just getting a dusting can really make a big difference in your hair and it always just feels so much better. So I know we covered a lot here and there's a lot of similar things, lots of similar symptoms. So I'm gonna put a chart together on my blog just so you have something to refer back to. And if you want me to create an actual map document that will show you like how to troubleshoot with your hair definitely let me know if you would be interested in that and i'll get that created for you so leave me a comment down below and let me know which one of these problems did you resonate with the most or which one do you think is going on with your hair so if you're still needing more help i definitely recommend checking out the video i did recently all about the causes of a failed wash day definitely check out this video because we dive more into styling techniques and products and lots of other things that could be leading to your hair being frizzy and just not acting right after wash day. So I'll have that video linked here on the screen and I'll talk to you over there. Bye everyone.